I want to pick up on this theme, and again, the president's tone today at a press conference justifying uh, his not going back home, or to Brussels for that matter, on the middle of this trip. He says that he had things to do, and that if he were to cave into that, and cave into attacks around the world, then, then he would never be able to do his job. Former Senator Evan Bayh, Democrat, on that. Senator, what do you think of that argument? Well, Neil, I understand the impulse to not let uh, terrorists dictate the president's schedule, uh, just as I understand we need to get on with our own lives and to not sacrifice our freedom or liberty because of these tyrannical murderers. At the same time, my advice would be, uh, to be and would have been to be more proactive, to be to show, to err on the side of showing more solidarity, more concern. Uh, so to have handled it a little bit differently, I don't think the baseball visual was uh, probably uh, what they intended. Um, you know, it's water under the proverbial bridge, Sinus, and I don't think it matters any to belabor the point. But I am wondering what the president said and what our strategy will be for his last nine or so months in office. It doesn't look like it's going to change. Now, uh, you could talk about taking out ISIS elements in Syria and elsewhere, southern Iraq. But these attacks do keep happening. And I'm almost beginning to wonder, sir, if, it's, uh, if we're at the point where it's too late to go after a concentration of ISIS elements in one country. They're now everywhere. They're like cockroaches around the world. Cells are everywhere. What do we do if we're not changing the posture to address that? Well, Neil, we've got to address this on several levels. First, we need to continue to try and obliterate the ISIS homeland in Iraq and Syria. That's a base from which they operate uh, and is where a lot of these attackers went, were trained, and now they've gone back to places like Belgium in such large numbers, the Belgian intelligence services literally don't have the uh, capability of following them all. So we've got to continue to reduce that homeland. It's very possible we do have covert operatives on the uh, ground there being more proactive. That's something that uh, we'll just have to understand in the fullness of time. So you've got to focus on that, number one. But at number two, to your point, is a lot of this is already in the pipeline. And for that, we've got to have very robust cooperation with the European intelligence services. And one of the things, Neil, we need to convince them, and frankly, some here in our own country, we have much more to fear from ISIS murderers and terrorists than we do from our own government. In some of those cultures over there, they're a little reluctant to let the you know, police and intelligence services do the kind of things that need to be done to ferret these people out, to stop these attacks before people are killed. And the ultimate sacrifice of our privacy and our liberty is when someone is killed. And that's the price we're paying right now. So more robust intelligence cooperation and giving law enforcement the tools they need to ferret these folks out. Well, you're right about the, the latter point, uh, Senator, because we're learning in Belgium right now, as they encountered in Paris, the agencies themselves were reluctant to share or communicate information. Some were even concerned about the legality of doing so. Of course, we've got that in spades here in the United States with this Apple case in San Bernardino. Do you think it changes, though, with the rapidity, the frequency of these terror attacks? Because I don't see that changing. I don't see that posture changing. Well, it may take time, Neil, but my uh, opinion is that it, it does change over time. You see a spike up in opinion. What we need is a more sustained level of support for doing what needs to be done. You know, following the Edward Snowden revelations, there was a great uh, reaction in Europe, a lack of willingness to work with us in our own country, a great suspicion of our own government. You know, let me tell you, I, I was on the Intelligence Committee uh, for 10 years in the United States Senate. Our government was not plotting to kill our citizens. ISIS is. Uh, and if we're going to stop these terrorists, we have to give our law enforcement and intelligence officials who are honorable, honorable law-abiding people who have to go to the courts to get permission for all the things they do to stop these attacks before they happen. So that there is no moral equivalency between our governments and the things that we do to try and stop them and what they do. They behead innocent people, they burn people alive, they kill women and children in airports and subways as we've just seen in, in Brussels. So we've got to get over this, sort of treating our government and these guys, you know, to a similar set of rules. We've got to give our police and intelligence folks what they need to put a stop to this. Senator, thank you very, very much. Good seeing you again. And you as well, Neil.